Pastor Roscoe Heath with New Praise Ministries. Welcome to uh, another rendition of uh, Radical for the Truth. And we're still talking about the homosexual heresy. We're glad that you joined us today. Um, I have my special guest and dear brother, Pastor Jackson, again, with Way of Life Ministries. And he's going to help me deal with this issue. Thank you, Amen. thank dear you, Pastor, Good for to be being here. here. Today I'd like to um, address some of the comments of a uh, our local pastor, um, Pastor James Darby, he, uh, he wants to know, he believes that homosexuality is not a sin. He believes that the Bible doesn't teach homosexuality as a sin. So um, today I'd like to address the heretical teachings of Pastor James Darby, Absolutely. Um, if you don't mind. Uh, Pastor, here's something that he says. Uh, this is from his website. Hey, is homosexuality, is it sinful? And therefore, gays shouldn't be allowed to marry. He says, if we say yes, then his question is why? And then he has a list of questions. If we say no, he doesn't have any questions. The, he says, congratulations on being part of civilized society. Civilized society. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, so he says, and so the implication is that if um, you believe that homosexuality is a sin, then you're not a part of society. civilized, civilized, civilized society. society. Right, right. So it would mean that Paul, the Apostle Paul, who has the equivalent who had the equivalent of three PhDs, okay, was uncivilized. Uh, here, he says, if we say that homosexuality is wrong, if our answer is yes, and then he asked the question why, uh, and then he has her because Jesus said so, not true. Jesus never uttered a word about same-sex relationships. Hmm. I say amen. Okay. He never said, he never used the word same-sex same sex. relationship. But he did use the word dogs. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did. I, okay, by all means, let's back it up with the word of God. The Bible says in Revelation 22, he says, he says that those who are, who are sorcerers, dogs, sexual immorality, which means homosexuals and sodomites and so forth, whatever, shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. But also now, Jesus said, wait a minute, now I come in a volume of the book because he has one of these questions, should we still obey the Old Testament laws? Yes, he Jesus does. said, I come in a volume of the book that means it's take and do what learn from me right yeah, so in deuteronomy and deuteronomy 23 just just saying this is where we should be deuteronomy 23 uh the bible reads it as such in uh uh verse which, which what, what verse do i really want um uh, let's see verse 18 deuteronomy 23 18 he says and you shall not bring the wages of a harlot or the price of a dog. Yeah. Now, if we look at this scripture and we pay attention to it, he's talking about homosexuality. Mm -hmm. Or the price of a dog to the house of the Lord your God for any vowed offering, for both of them are an abomination to the Lord your mm -hmm. God. Now, this is the word of God. Mm -hmm. Now, does me and you, that, does that make us uncivilized because we pay attention to the word of God, the word that proceeds out of his mouth that causes us to live and not die? According to James Darry, yes, we're, we're uncivilized. And so is um, the Apostle Paul. And so is everyone who is a biblical teacher. Um, he feels, uh, Pastor Darby feels that um, the Old Testament is irrelevant. What's funny about that is that the New Testament writers quoted and taught from the Old, Old Testament. Testament. In fact, the uh, Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 15, he says, uh, the things that were written aforetime is made as an were example. written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So the um, irrational, <laughs> um, unlearned statement that um, the Old Testament is irrelevant or to even Im imply that is to negate the New Testament. Let me say something else too about what Jesus, about Jesus, whether he spoke to homosexuality or not. I think that you've proven that he has. But also in the book of um, John, the 17th chapter, in the 20th verse, where Jesus is uh, praying, doing his prayer, you know, before his uh, passion, mm, he says true. this. This is in the 20th verse. He says, "I do not pray for these alone." Okay when she was praying for the disciples. He says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as your father, as you father, 
and in, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. In other words, those whom Jesus has ordained and chosen have the authority to speak in his name mm -hmm. truths. And so Jesus says, I'm praying uh, for all of those who will believe what I say um, through their word. And so the Apostle Paul and all of the apostles that spoke to this issue of homosexuality had authority uh, from Jesus to speak on it. And uh, listen, again, this goes back to what you and I talked about um, in earlier broadcasts about the veracity and truthfulness of the Bible. Okay, the Bible is on trial now. Pastor Darby he he casts aspersions at people who believe the Bible. You know, making statements like "Congratulations on being part of civilized society." Listen to what he calls you if you believe the Bible, the biblical text. Have fun living your sexist, chauvinistic, judgmental, xenophobic. I don't know what that means. Me Sorry. So that does show my ignorance. Lifestyle choice. The rest of culture will advance forward without you. Well, advance where though? <laughs> forward. <laughs> and, here, and here's the thing. Um, the, just because society is moving doesn't mean that it's moving forward. Okay? Society is moving um, in a position away from the word of God. You're absolutely right. Society is moving away from the word of God. But that can never be moving forward. That can only be moving towards certain judgment, which um, all of the nations and which false teachers will find out. Absolutely. Proverbs 14, 12. What For there is a way which seemeth right no. unto a man, but the end thereof is death and destruction. So you're right. They're moving to a place of death and destruction because yeah. they're denying the truth. Yeah. And shame on Pastor Darby for you to, to, to say you're a pastor and have a church and you're, you're in the community uh, right in this area is where we are here. But yet you, you preach to a congregation uh, that's totally against the word of God. Uh, and, and, and it's like it's not that we're not trying to love you or to love on anybody else that's caught up in these sins. The truth of the matter is we're trying to do everything we can to show the truth, to bring the truth, to bring the light into a dark place so that you can live and not die. And I, I just, I would love to just really just face you one-on-one -on -one, uh, with me and Pastor Heath and just begin to just open up this uh, forum because at the end too, uh, ignorance. Yeah. Ignorance. We we really don't want you to be ignorant. But one thing I do have to say, uh, according to Ephesians chapter five, and this is one of the things that I really don't like to get caught up with is, is is trying to debate the word of God and trying to argue the word of God because it's not an argument when it's truth. The truth shall stand, yes. and the truth shall make you free. Now notice this, but he says uh, according to the word of God, Ephesians chapter five and verse three, he says. Uh, but fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be named among you as a becoming or a fitting saint, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse gesturing, which are not fitting, but rather give thanks to God. Now, here's one of the things I want to say to you, brother, and any other pastor. I watched this forum on uh, on uh, the Impact Station, a bunch of pastors. They had uh, this forum about uh, same-sex marriage and everything else. And every last one of them, except for one, one pastor, they wavered on it. They wavered and they tried everything they could to go around the scriptures. But this one pastor stood up against the whole panel. And I gave him all the praise and all the honor because one thing for sure is that we can't sit here just because uh, uh, it's popular or we want the political vote or we want to be important to, to downgrade God's word from mm -hmm. what it says. And so we have to look at the word mm -hmm. of God. All uncleanliness. Tell me anything that's clean about two men being together or two women being together. And then... I well, can't. but their position is that if they are in, he uses, Pastor Darby uses the term committed relationship, you know, committed uh, to uh, each other. Uh, that doesn't seem to be a biblical uh, proposition to me, though. Not at all. <laughs> um, there are a lot of false teachers in the world. I'm not saying that Pastor Darby is a false teacher, I will say that you're mistaken in how you approach the Word of God and what you believe about the Word of God. Okay, if you believe that the Bible doesn't teach against homosexuality in the New Testament, read Romans the first chapter. We've gone over these scriptures Absolutely. ad nauseum at this point yes. uh, in this broadcast. First Corinthians, um, first Corinthians the sixth chapter, beginning at the ninth verse. Okay, if you think that it's just talking about 
prostitution, about male prostitution. It's not just talking about male prostitution. It is talking about sinful acts in God's, side, in God's eyes uh, and a sinful lifestyle that needs to be repented of, as well as other sins. L let me go over this again, 1 okay. Corinthians 6 and 9. He says, um, do, you not, uh, do you not know that the unrighteous will not, will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, nor the fornicators, mm -hmm. nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Now, if, this, if what Pastor Darby is saying is true, and that this is all a reference to uh, prostitution, then that means that um, being a thief is all right, too. Right. Being a drunkard or covetous or extortioner. You know, all, I mean, your, your argument is inconsistent with biblical truth. Um, and just because something is well-devised and well-spoken doesn't make it right. The Word of God is right. Psalm 33, I believe. Absolutely. Three. He says, for the Word of God is right. Folks, read your Bible, read the Word of God, and don't believe people who try to keep you in sin. <laughs> and, and, you know, one of the things I love about the Word of God it says, believe not every spirit. Oh. We have to realize that every person you meet is a spirit. Yeah. Now, whether they're the Holy Spirit or multiple spirits of the devil himself, you have to be able to have that discernment. Yeah. You cannot believe every person is coming up to you mm -hmm. and saying you have to go back and research for yourself and look at it again. And even for those of you who are who, who possibly are homosexual and lesbian and so forth, whatever, the truth of the matter is that why what's so wrong with you are actually searching for the truth mm -hmm. i mean literally digging down into it so you can find out whether or not this is true and whether it's, it's wrong or not you just can't believe a man's report and amen. that's the whole thing amen to say. amen and make sure of this understand this god loves you okay god loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son and he sent his son as a propitiation or a payment for our sins. So the issue is not whether God loves you or not. God loves you so much that he wants to re redeem you, that he wants to reshape us. Absolutely. All of us, the homosexual, the liar, the thief, the, uh, the, the, murderer. the murderer, the fornicator, all of us does. God loves us, but people who try to teach us contrary to the word of God, they, don't they love do you. not love you. They don't love you. No, absolutely okay? not. They don't love you. Anyone who tells you that God is good with your sin, and he's okay with it, in fact, your sin is not even a sin, regardless of what the Bible says, cannot be operating from a position of love. Absolutely. It's a satanic position, isn't it? Absolutely. And in fact, I'm going to tell you something. It is misleading. And here's the other thing, is that homosexuality, its roots come from satanic worship. Mm -hmm. The roots of homosexuality don't come from uh, a social institution or a social problem among uh, the community. The roots of homosexuality come from false pagan worship. Satan always tries to create the opposite of what God created. Absolutely. God created man and woman, life. He created marriage between a man and woman. Satan wants to do the opposite of that. And he has no problem with using the Bible to try to promote his agenda. Absolutely. Give me a little truth, <laughs> dangle it in front of you, and then take you and put you in a trap. Yes. The Bible calls it a snare. A snare. So, and this is the thing about it, you don't understand is that a little truth came to you and you thinking, okay, this is all right, but now he got you in a snare and now you really are living in a position where you're literally dying spiritually. Oh, Lord. And you know what? And God, in the 23rd chapter of the book of Jeremiah, yes, it's Old Testament, he condemns shepherds who mislead the people. Absolutely. Okay. He condemns them strongly. I think we should take that up next week. Okay. Uh, the shepherds who are misleading up. the people and who are fooling them and making them believe something contrary to the word of God. Uh, James Darby, uh, yes, we're going to uh, address that. I think I'm going to send something, uh, post something to your site. And um, I'd love to take up a discussion with you, a civil discussion. I know it'll be difficult discussing it with two uncivilized people Absolutely. like you and I. But we'll try our best to uh, be reasonable and compassionate and civilized uh, in that discussion. And if you choose not to have that discussion, we appreciate um, uh, your fervent attitude with uh, posting what you believe, although what you believe is heresy. 
It's totally heresy. Right. It's against the word of God. And there's going to be judgment uh, Absolutely. brought about because of it. Listen, our time is up. But uh, we'll be back again next week. Every time I think we're going to wrap it up, something else happens and, and it's going to take us further. Uh, we'll be discussing this even next week. So we look forward to hearing from you. Send us any questions or comments on tbtruth at yahoo.com. God bless you. Thank you very much. Be blessed.